Greetings, everyone. Well, time to get into some Halloween horror movie reviews. Yeah, I haven't done these for, well, I guess a year. Let's get right into it. Today, we're going to be talking about the early Wes Craven religious cult slash, you know, devil movie thing. Deadly Blessing, available now on Blu-ray and DVD from the fine folks at Screen Factory. Today, on the Multimedia Chronicles. Blessing. I think uh, it was Skinslip actually warned me away from this one. He says, oh, that one's terrible. Now, you know you're in for a treat when even Skinslip says it's terrible. Because <laughs> he watches a lot of questionable quality films, shall we say. Well, needless to say, I wanted to check this out for a few reasons. One of the big ones being I'm a huge Ernest Borgnine fan. And Ernest Borgnine plays the leader of the, you know, the, the, the fanatically religious leader of the cult that is kind of the centerpiece of this, of this film. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Uh, I enjoyed it, actually. There's, uh, there's a lot of twists and turns along here. I don't know that I'd call it particularly scary, but uh, there's some things in it that would definitely send chills up a few spines, I think. Um, one thing I should mention is this actually features a very young Sharon Stone in one of her early films. Yeah, did you know that Sharon Stone did some exploitation horror? Well, here you go. Look no farther than Deadly Blessing. Um, and it's kind of funny. So young and so unrecognizable was she that I didn't even realize it was her. Um, as I was watching, I was just like, hmm, that, that girl seems kind of familiar. I wonder if I've seen her in something. And I thought, oh, probably just some other cheesy horror movie. Yeah, maybe like Basic Instinct or something. <laughs> yeah, um, actually, funny enough, I still haven't watched Basic Instinct. The viewer sent it to me ages ago. I still haven't watched it. Um, the thing I mostly know her from is Total Recall, as the you know the the martial arts bitchy wife. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Ernest Borgnine as a fanatical cult leader. Hell yeah, sign me up. Um, it also has uh, what's his face, uh, Michael. Berryman, I believe. Can't see. Michael Berryman, yes. I always forget his name. But you'll, you'll recognize him. He's the, the bald guy with... Um, he's, he's got some weird medical condition where he basically has no, uh, uh, no body hair. And he has no... Uh, he can't sweat. It's interesting. Uh, most people probably know him from the original Hills Have Eyes. He was also in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest as one of the inmates. Um, and he's been a favorite of horror films for years, for years. Anyway, he's got a pretty, you know, a, a memorable role in this. He's not in the whole thing, but uh, he does have a pretty memorable role in there um, as kind of a, a simple man who is, um, you know, disapproving of the ways of some of the women in the film. But, uh, but yeah, overall, I, I enjoyed this. I would watch it again. It was, it was a fun little you know, cheesy horror romp. I really have no complaints about it. Now, as for the uh, the cover art, I probably showed this in when I originally got this, but I'll show you again. So we have this lovely uh, new artwork for the Screen Factory release, and as you know, they have reversible covers. And then on the back cover, which I use as the main Blu-ray cover, we actually have the original movie poster, which is quite nice. So there we go. Now, in terms of extras, there's actually quite a lot of stuff in here. Um, we've got, uh, they, they don't even list everything on the back, actually, which is odd. I don't know why you think they'd hype all that up. But uh, we've got audio commentary by director Wes Craven, interview with actresses Susan Buckner, uh, sorry, actress Susan Buckner, and writers Glenn M. Benest and Matthew Barr. Uh, there's also an interview with Michael Berryman on here. Like, I, I don't understand why they wouldn't mention that on the extras. I mean, that would be a huge selling point for horror fans, because he's such a huge, popular uh, actor. But go figure, they didn't mention it. But anyway, there is an interview with Michael Berryman on here, so check it out. 
Uh, and they also have TV spots and the theatrical trailer. So, yeah, overall, I, I definitely recommend Deadly Blessing. I mean, it's it's fun. I mean, you don't go into something like this expecting a masterpiece, but it's fun just for the cheese factor. I mean, to see, I mean, for to, to see Ernest Borgnine really cast against type here as the fanatical uh, religious leader, uh, Bible thumping and uh, hand whipping <laughs> uh, religious leader, and you got. Um, uh, and you got Michael Berryman, who's always a favorite, and you got the young Sherry, 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 Sharon Stone. Um, yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. But uh, you know, don't go in expecting high art because that it ain't. I mean, it's it's an early Wes Craven film. It's uh, you know from 1981, so three years before Nightmare on Elm Street, and. Um, yeah, but still fun. I don't know. I don't know what Skinslip doesn't like about it. Maybe he'll do a video about it at some point. But um, go figure. Everybody's tastes are different. You know, I, I definitely saw some good in there. Uh, oh, and speaking of making people squirm, if you have a thing about spiders, you might want to take a pass on this one. Because there's some pretty intense spider moments. <laughs> That's all I'll say, without spoiling anything, but even Sharon Stone, who was the subject of a lot of those intense spider moments, uh, was pretty squeamish about doing those particular scenes, because they were using real live spiders most of the time. And uh, there's kind of a notorious thing, you know, animal rights activists and whatnot don't like about this film, in that the um, uh, there's a scene where a spider was, was supposed to crawl on her, and it was it was a venomous spider, but it was tame. But she refused to do the scene unless they clipped the spider's fangs. So they clipped them, <laughs> which uh, basically meant that the spider would have trouble feeding itself. So I guess they you know they'd have to care for it for its lifespan. But you know, early days of film, man, back in the day, yeah, you'd never get away with that today. <laughs> It was a different world back in the early 80s, definitely. Alrighty, well, that is it for me to you for now. So until next time, thanks for watching, and sayonara.